I am here to introduce the speaker for today. I have known this individual literally from the time that he was born until now that he's 20. the Adventist Primary School and the Barbados Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School. He is currently in the process of completing the final year of his degree program at the Barbados Community College. He enjoys sports, especially watching basketball. He has also developed a love for photography. The speaker embraces Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. He therefore lets nothing get in the way to prevent him from achieving his goal. He is a reserved person by nature, but relishes the opportunity to have a good laugh. I present to you our speaker for today, Brother Vernardo Corbin. Good afternoon, church. My hope is that everyone is doing well this afternoon. The, the title of my presentation today is Jesus Paid It All. Let's pray. Dear kind of Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us all here safely. I pray that as we partake in the message that we will take something from it and be able to live a greater life for your prayer. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. In a world that is filled with chaos and uncertainty, I want to reassure you from God's word today that Jesus is the Christ for every crisis. He has charted a path that is second to none. He has made provision to meet any emergency we may encounter from before time to eternity and beyond. God reminds us in his words in Jeremiah chapter 5, chapter 1, sorry, and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And it ordained thee to a prophet, sorry, unto the nations. What a great God we serve. Jesus says, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Every time Jesus looks at the marks in his hands, he remembers the sacrifice he made for us. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9 says, says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. From the very beginning of time, God had a plan for every one of us here today. But what was God's plan? The Garden of Eden was a representation of what he desired the whole earth to become. And it was his purpose that as a human family increased in numbers, they should establish other homes and schools like the one he had given. The Garden of Eden was the first home, the first school, and the very first church. All of these make up the community. God expects all of these to work together to achieve the results that he desires. Thus, in the course of time, the whole world might be occupied with homes and schools where the work and word of God should be studied and where students should thus be more fully fitted 
to reflect throughout endless ages the light of the knowledge of his glory. Everything would have been perfect if things remain the way they were from creation, but we all know that it is not so. With the entrance of sin, God's plan has been interrupted, but not changed. Hebrews 13 and verse 8 says, He is the same today and forever. The result of eating of the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil is manifested in every man's experience. There is in his nature a bent towards evil, a force which unaided he cannot resist. To withstand this force, man must trust in one power only. That power is Christ, who remains sinless despite the many temptations he encountered. Cooperation with Christ is our greatest need. God wants the very best for us. So he says through his servant, Ellen G. White, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. As God's remnant people, we must endeavor to reach God's standard. In order for his children to reach the ideal standard, that was set for us, he created three powerful institutions. The home, the school, and the church. Therefore, parents, in reality, you are your child's first teacher. Now, our focus today is on education. That is why it is called Education Day. So let us define education. True education is defined as the harmonious development of all the faculties, a full and adequate preparation for this life and the future eternal life. In Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, we read, I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Now, this is good news. Isn't it? Jesus is saying, I have the formula for success. Then, what is the responsibility of parents? It is found in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. How can this be accomplished? The answer is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 to 9. It's paraphrased. Parents, study the word and live it each day. Teach us to live it as we walk the highway, as we sit at home on our chair, before we go to bed, and at the break of day. Write it on the doorpost. Write it on the gate. Let it be as front lights before our faces. But many people say there is not enough time each day for Bible study, lesson study, prayers, or even prayer. Many days, I begin my day by checking my cell phone just out of habit. Sometimes, added to those things, we wake up late. And before we know it, it's time to go our separate ways. But God says in Exodus 20, 11, I have given you seven days in each week and 24 hours in each day. Prioritize the time. God is saying, take time out for me. I took time out for you. The songwriter puts it nicely this way. Take a little time in the morning. And you'll feel better all day. Take a little time for Jesus to get down on your knees and pray. He took the time to die on the cross. So all the souls couldn't be lost. If you find yourself slipping and the pain to do, take time out for Jesus. He took time for you. 
Quoting from the book, Education, page 17, it says, the Holy Scripture is the perfect standard of truth and as such should be given the highest place in education. Church, only those who fortify their minds with the word of God will be able to stand in the evil day. And the evil day is here, even though it will get worse. Each of us must decide where our priority lies. We must prioritize a closer relationship with God. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation. We are called out from the world to be a holy nation set apart, a royal priesthood, a child of the king, a peculiar people, different, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have seen the importance and the role of the home in providing true education. Now let's take a look at the school. In the Bible, God admonished his people to establish schools of the prophets where his children can be educated according to his standards. He has also in our day given the vision to establish schools where his children can be educated. Here is what is required of teachers in God's school. The true teacher is not satisfied with second-rate work, with directing his students to a standard lower than that which is possible to attain. He cannot be content with imparting to them only technical knowledge, with making them clever accountants, skillful artisans, or successful tradesmen. He must inspire them with principles of truth that will make them a positive force for the stability and power to shape the character and in the training embraces eternity. The ideal thing for each one of his children is to be educated in his school. For many, the reason for our children not attending our schools is that times are hard and things are getting harder every day. Some say, why do I have to pay school fees when there are institutions with free education? In Psalms chapter 127, verse 3, God says, children are his property, parents are only stewards. God says in Psalm 50, verses 10 to 11, every beast is mine, all the cattle. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. The world is mine and the fullness thereof. The silver and gold is our mine, sorry. I have your welfare at heart. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. I provide daily for the falls of the air. Are you not much better than they? I fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. I provided manna for the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. I provide for you. I am the same yesterday today and forever. Yet yeah, man say, show me how and I will trust you. But God says, trust me and I will show you how. Unless the three institutions work together, the home, school, and church, the training of our children will lack the desired result. Young men and women who have not received the proper training at home and are not supported at school, then backed up by the church will always be a problem in our society. Where there's little or no guidance, our young people are left to a life of crime and violence with no regard for authority or law. The perpetrators of crimes believe they have the right to destroy. But we need to let the accused know that 6,000 years ago, 
blood flowed down the streets of Calvary. And that, and so that I can set them free from the clutches of the enemy because it justifies, it purifies, and it sanctifies. It saves lives. When our forefathers sold us out to the devil, a humongous debt was incurred. Jesus became our liability. He took responsibility for our sin. In order to pay the debt, there had to be the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission. So God emptied heaven of all its resources to pay the debt. Church, he didn't pay in installments, but in cash to buy us back. But why? Because he chose us above all others. We are valuable to him. He wants us forever. Do we want to live with Christ forever? He has made it possible. Church, Christian education helps to build a stronger nation. It is a sure foundation because it is built on Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. God's plan, therefore, is to redeem man from the bondage of sin. Sin which corrupted the first home, the first school, the first church, and as a result, the whole society. The work of education and redemption are one. Jesus will say to all who make it, Come ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. John 3.16 says, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 10, verses 27 to 30 says, My sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall not perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. I and my Father are one. So Jesus is emphatic because he repeats himself. No man is able to pluck them out of my hands. Are we willing to be obedient? to all God's commands? Are we willing to go all the way with him? Please remember that Jesus paid it all. Thank you. This afternoon, as we come to the close of our service, I just want to remind us that love always finds a way. In the Garden of Eden, as Bernardo shared with us, and thank you very much, Bernardo, for sharing the word today, was unique. It had all the aspects of Christian education in one place. In 2021, we don't necessarily have everything in one place. And so it is extremely important that we promote our biblical principles and values first at home. And I want to stress that home is where the teaching begins. Home is where it happens. And home also extends to any house that your children frequent. And I thought I needed to say that to you because we only think of home as where we are. Home is also going to be where your children are. And so you need to make sure that you allow your children to associate and be influenced by people who have the same values and have the same principles that you do. 
any of you will agree with me if you think about growing up. A Christian teacher is a blessing to a child. Wherever you may have gone to school, the Christian teachers were the ones that made the difference. They were the ones that spent the extra time. They were the ones that were a bit more patient. They were the ones that prayed before class began. Your Christian teacher, if you think about it, they were the ones that made the difference. And so our children are entrusted to our care, not only for home, but also for school. And so we also want our children to experience what is happening at home, also what happens at school, and then there is church. And I want to encourage all of us today to ensure that we follow God's will for the children that he has entrusted to us. Invest in their eternity. And that would mean spending quality time with our children at home to educate them in the ways of the Lord. We also need to ensure that we bring them to church, not send them, that we bring them to church, that we sit with them, that we guide them, and that we review the lessons that they have been taught. Sometimes we bring them, sometimes we sit with them, but oftentimes, like how they have homework and we review what happens at school, we forget sometimes to review what has happened at church. This is the way that children are children remember when you are able to talk about it. So when you are traveling in the car and going back home, when you're sitting at lunch, spend that time to talk to the children about the lesson for the day. What was the, what was shared? What do you want them to remember? What is important for them? And we are responsible for the investment. Yes, Jesus paid it all. But eternity will tell the returns of our investment at home. Eternity will tell, the, tell about the investment at church. And eternity will tell about the investment at school. And so I want to encourage us today to make sure that we invest in our children. Don't just invest in the gadgets. Invest time with them. Spend time with them. That is where they learn most. Eat meals with them. That is where you can cement some of the concepts you have. And if you are able also to be an educator, where children come to your home, where they interact with you at church, where they are at Pathfinder Club, where um, you have any opportunity to, to influence and impress on them, I want to encourage us today to be good educators for the children that God has entrusted to us. It no longer is a home to raise a child, it's a village. And so when they come and they spend time with us, we need to make sure that we are sharing those principles that God has shared with us. So when they come to church and they sit with us, we need to share those principles. When we go to our workplaces and we interact with the children of the other colleagues that we work with, we are educators. When we teach at schools, we are educators. Wherever we go, when we see them on the vans and we encourage them, you know, to, to use, use the right language, to, you know, don't fight on the road, to, to, you know, you don't have to relate like that. You can do it differently. We are educating our children and the children belong to us. And so I continue to encourage us to find a way to impress on these young children that God has put in our village, impress on them what God has asked us to. Make sure parents, make sure guardians, make sure mothers and fathers in Israel that these children that God has entrusted to us, that at home, at school, and at church, that we, we provide them with the kind of knowledge, with the kind of education that would fit them for the Garden of Eden that is to come. That is my encouragement to you this morning. And my prayer is that you, along with me, would encourage them. This morning, I make a pledge that I will encourage, I will educate the children that God has put in my village so that I can point them towards him and towards heaven. If this is your prayer this morning, if this is your commitment, if it is something that you want to strive towards, or maybe something you want to do a bit more, I encourage you this morning to stand wherever you are. 
as we pray a prayer of consecration, not only for our children, but for us who are put in place to educate and invest in them. I invite you to stand now with me if that is your prayer. And I invite you to bow your heads at this time. Dear God, we thank you for the message today. We thank you that we have been reminded that our children are important at home. Our children are important at school. Our children are important at church. May we, Lord, first at church as amazing grace, may we provide the environment so they can learn. We ask that at school that we would, we would invest in them so that they will be surrounded by those who will also share your values and your principles that we find in the Bible. And we ask that at home, Lord, that we will make the time. We will make sure that we invest the time to spend with them and encourage them to be more like you. May our lives be the example that these children see. May our lives be the one that points them to your cross. May they understand, Lord, that we want what is best for them. And may they always remember that love will find a way. Bless us, Lord, as we recommit to your children this morning. And we ask that you will bless us wherever we are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.